And I said, watch side B on Paul's channel. I, I linked to my own stream. Oh my god, Kyle. <laughs> It's horrible. I'm sorry. It's all right. I'm sure. I'm, totally I'm sure off. everyone will figure it out eventually. Yeah, they're smart. Um, hello everyone. Hello and welcome. Hola. It is it is time for awesome hardware. We're beginning right now. We're not beginning. I'm sorry. Um, we're give continuing. Me, give me give me give me give me two seconds to paste this. So totally have this all figured out, paste guys. Paste this all time. Sorry. Don't you worry. Awesome Hardware is what you're watching right now. It's a live show. We talk about technology, computer parts mostly. We, uh, we stream every Tuesday evening at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time, and we split the show in half. The first half of this episode, which is number 164, already streamed to Kyle's channel, which is Bitwit, and it's linked in the video description if you missed it. Uh, this is Side B, and then after Side B, we're going to do an after party, which I was supposed to link in the video description, and it's not... It's not there yet, but I'm totally going to do that. Yeah. In the meantime, though, yeah. uh, at the beginning of the show, we usually do stuff like warning you that occasionally we use adult language from time to time, so please bear that in mind and uh, damn your ears if you are not wanting to hear us curse and use words like damn. Damn! Damn! Damn you! Um, other than that, we also both have stores, and we highly encourage you to help support our channels and get yourself some nice merch by shopping at our stores. My store is paulsarbor.net. Uh, we have shirts, mugs, pint glasses, bottle openers, uh, mouse pads, mouse mats. Uh, it's all really good stuff, so uh, buy something, won't ya? Do it! And we will shout out your name. We're actually going to do that in the after party, which will be linked in the description in just a second. Yeah. Uh, Kyle's store, if you want to... Oh, did I say my store's URL is paulshardware.net? I didn't? think so, yeah. Okay. Kyle's store is also available, bitwit.tech slash store for Kyle's store. Uh, lots Word. of merchandise. Very similar to mine, but with Kyle's logos on it instead of mine. Yep. Uh, all real nice, though, so thank you guys for supporting our show. And how the heck do I update my stupid thing? <laughs> this, is that, <laughs> this is not going... <laughs> You've got this, man. Uh, it's only I, your 164th show. Give I yourself was, a break. I was really close. I was <laughs> on the verge of having it proper. All right. Never mind, though. Let's uh, let's get let's continue talking about tech news. Right? Do it. Yeah. Technology news. My and favorite. And the headline of my show today, which is about Intel's high-end desktop platform, which which we've talked about <laughs> with some degree of extensiveness on the show, because. It, the high-end desktop, it's like this Halo product. It's its something that not everyone can 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 get to because it tends to be more expensive. So you have to bear that in mind. But uh, if you can, and especially if you're actually using it for something useful like video editing or, or something, some, some C, something that requires some CPU heavy lifting, then it's definitely potentially worth your while to get into. Sure. Uh, I've just realized that I'm not, this isn't logged into the right account at all. That's terrible. That's a switch. Uh -oh. Quick, do a song and dance. Switch. switch. Where did the beer go? Uh, I brought them out there right here. Oh yeah, oh. that's what we forgot. Yeah. I was wondering. I thought I felt there was something missing from from your intro. Beer. Something. Ah. We yes, also drink booze. Beer. There we go. Okay. You must take the booze. I'll pick that up later. Yep. Or never. Even better. Okay. Yes, Kyle, talk about beer for, for just a brief moment. Uh, I realized what a Please. simpleton I, I, I am. Uh, the other day when I was I was in Vegas with some friends, we went to this, some bougie-ass brunch place called Tableau. It was in the Wynn Tableau. Wynn Hotel. Tab oh. And I was like, do you have a drink menu? And the waiter was like, oh, like uh, drinks, like what kind of drinks? Like like cocktails? Like He was super famous. He was like, oh, like, like cocktails. And I was <laughs> so inclined to just say like a booze menu. A booze menu. Like, I almost literally said, like, a booze menu, and I, re I looked around and I was like, I should probably not say that, that right now. That would have spoiled everything. would have definitely put me on the map as, would have shown as you hashtag be... poor people. Uh, so I said, yes, a cocktail menu would be lovely, sir. I see. And uh, I, I plan to never go back there ever right. again. Well, well, well done. So well that, done. Was, that was my booze story. I, I've talked, that's the, that's the most entertaining, the longest I can be entertaining about talking about that's booze That's a good for. booze story. Thank you. Thank you. I'm I like great. moments from doing what I wanted to do. All right, other boost story. Other boost to, story. I had to. Switch. One time, one time, Paul had to stall for so long on a worldwide, globally streamed live stream that I had to make up on the spot 
some bullshit story about booze oh, while was he all, got his shit together. Was all it a was lie? so lame that, and embarrassing that was all just for him, a not lie. for me. It was no, no, no. That actually happened. But I'm talking happen. about this story now. Okay. Yeah. No. Well, thank you, Kyle. That actually did happen. All right. No, see, did I do, do, did I do a good job? No, that was good. That was very really good. good at it was very good. Thank you. I'm a staller. The, if you refresh now, the after party should be linked in the description, which doesn't even matter because it hasn't even started yet. So This is true. I realized that that was less of a big deal. Also, now the dogs are freaking out for some reason. I should close the door. I'm going to close the door. Kyle, I need eight more seconds of distraction. One, <laughs> two, <laughs> I'm just going to... Just sing to I'll just sing to eight until it's over. Right. Uh, beautiful. <sighs> Everything's going perfectly. All right. Intel's high-end desktop platform is potentially, according to this article from Tech Power Up, which I was noting as I read it, doesn't. Oh no! Here's the source: PC Builders Club. Where is it? PC Builders Club is where this is sourced from. Yep. Where is PC Builders Club getting their source? Uh, this is from Germany. Anyway, <laughs> point being, it's no one the, the, the the postulation here is that uh, Intel is going to actually fork their high-end desktop platform. What does and that mean? It means there's going to be two. There's, they're going to split from one platform to two platforms. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Right now, Intel's high-end des desktop platform is X299. Right. Skylake X CPUs. Of course. Um, according to this. We the successor to X two ninety nine, which can't of course as you know be X three ninety nine because AMD already was like dibs on X three ninety nine. We're gonna name we're gonna yep. take that name. Sure. Z three ninety nine. So essentially, what you have here is two Very variants. Confusing. Two variants of a high end desktop platform. One that's a little bit more focused on high core count CPUs. And one that is a little bit more focused on some backwards compatibility, as well as probably more of a successor to what Skylake X currently is on X299. So you'd have two different sockets. Uh, you'd have LGA2066, which of course is currently the socket for X399, but uh, it would now have a new chipset. So hmm. this hasn't really been, been done before on the high-end desktop platform, um, usually they, they have a single chipset and they stick stick with it for like three years. Um, huh. So of course, this, this brings up many questions. LGA 2066 would be Z399. Of course, that's not, that's not an X anymore. Z is more like what they have on their mainstream platform with like Z270 and Z370 and Z390 coming up soon. Mm -hmm. X599 would be LGA3647. Aha. 3647 obviously is a much larger socket. That's the current right. socket that's used on the high-end Xeon server uh, systems. LGA3647 would support 24-core, 26-core, and 28-core Skylake X XCC processors, which is extended or extreme core count. Because uh, hmm. currently on Skylake X they have... Uh, high core count and they have regular core count or standard core count because it because it, it goes from four all the way up to 18 on the, right. on the current platform right um meanwhile this z399 new successor chipset with lga 2066 would uh support up to 22 core cpus so still a lot <laughs> jumping from 18 cores with the 7980xe right now to 20 and 22 right um so you can kind of see here if you're looking at the article, and of course all my articles linked in the description if you guys want to check them out, uh, you, you can kind of see how they're, they're making the stratification of their high-end desktop platform. And it almost vaguely makes some sense to me uh, in, in, in some ways, but you also have thrown in there just the, the confusing aspect of the freaking chipset names. Yeah. Which this just makes more confusing. That's going to mess everything up. And... <laughs> So yeah, so I'm so I'm torn about this news. Assuming, of course, that it is true. Um, this is obviously this is this is early stuff and rumor stuff, so we're not 100 percent sure about it. Because that makes me think that there's going to be different features on each of these chipsets now that we have to consider. Potentially, possibly. Um, the art the article purports that um, X599 would essentially be uh, a rehash of their existing. 
uh, chipset that they have on LGA thirty six forty seven, which is what is it? C. It's a C. It's a C chip. It's a C chip. Ready to go. C. I swear to God, it's right in here. I'm blind. I am blind. C five zero six. C five zero six. No. C six two nine. There it is, C629. Thank you, Kyle. Wow, I was looking the wrong... All right, so X5999 would essentially take their server chip, C629, add some client segment features, and subtract some enterprise segment ones so it wouldn't compete with their mm -hmm. uh, high enter enterprise class stuff. Right. Whereas Z399 would be an actual more like successor to X299 and what it is right now, and probably do some stuff like what Z390 is doing. I'm sorry, Z... Yeah, Z390 is doing from Z370, uh -huh. uh, adding stuff like 802.11 AC Wi-Fi integrated and, and USB 3.1. So it still seems like Z399 is still going to be more of like the consumer-based professional workstation. High-end desktop, but consumer-based. But, consu but consumer-based. Consumer, as yeah. opposed to like server-side for X599. X599 definitely seems yes. more like the Xeon type geared. And X599 would definitely be something to compete with AMD's Epic and Ryzen stuff. Threadripper and Threadripper 2 stuff oh, now, yeah. now that they have the 2990WX sure. which is 32 cores mm -hmm. on a consumer platform. Wait, so Z399 would be the competitor to Threadripper, right? And X599 would be the competitor to Epic. No, X599 would be the competitor to, to Threadripper. Threadripper. Okay. I mean, they'd both be competitors to Threadripper in some respects. Okay. But if you need the core count, and often things you need core count for are much more specialized. Like, yeah. That's a problem with like with with the, the 2990WX on, on AMD side right, right now. Is it's good at some very specific things. Yeah. But it's actually not good at some it's of the basic stuff. Like it, you get much better gaming performance sure. with the 2950X than you do with the 2990WX right, right now. Okay. So, yeah. So there's there's variables there with the that goes into the high core count thing and everything. Um, but ultimately, it's Intel taking some of their existing. Mm -hmm hardware that they already have working with on on the server side and porting that down to the consumer level which they've mm -hmm. definitely done many times before mm -hmm. with their high-end desktop platform but also again creating this fork with two dis different chipsets two different sockets in the high-end desktop space still high-end desktop is still that's still consumer uh yeah. focused um so again i'm excited about the potential for crazy powerful computers in the consumer space and stuff that's more reasonably priced in enterprise. Uh, I like Intel answering back to AMD and competing here, especially after everything that happened with Threadripper. Why is your computer getting all mad? I don't all know. I wasn't I'm not doing anything. You're on some website that's farming, that's it's mining. <laughs> no. It's mining. I just have, I just have Chrome open. Came okay. over. <laughs> Rip. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the the downsides to it, of course, are just the stupid, there's the confusion, the, naming the confusion, the and... naming schemes. Yeah. I feel like if you could somehow separate everything AMD and everything Intel and rename their product stacks from the top down with di something disparate on both sides, it would clarify stuff, for, especially for anyone who's getting into PC building for the first time, just so much. Yeah. That would be nice. Um but yeah, ultimately, we'll have to wait and see, and I think there's still lots of people who do still remember Intel's 28-core demo with the with the chiller unit that they did at uh, Computex, mm -hmm. um, specifically to, to try to combat the Threader Per 2 launch stuff that they were about to come out with, and uh, I think people are still remembering that Intel did promise a 28-core CPU by the end of this year. Right. A consumer high-end desktop 28-core CPU. Yeah, and they're not going to do that. I don't. I don't think they can do that on on LGA 2066. So true. I feel like we're in we're already in October. We're in the last. We're in Q4. We're anticipating an Intel launch on the main on the mainstream side pretty soon. I don't know. It seems like there's a lot. <laughs> so like the end of the year might have a lot of stuff going on. Maybe. I don't think it's all going to be fit, fitted into the end of the year. Yeah. A lot of it's going to overflow into 2019. Yeah, so we'll we'll wait and see, and we'll talk about it when it happens. So yeah, uh, hopefully that brings you guys up to speed a little bit with what's coming up Oof. on the Intel side. 
Let's talk about uh, tariffs and gaming, uh, the prices for computer components here in the United States. Gamers, uh -huh. Gamers Nexus, Steve, our friends over there at GN, uh, did some actual journalistic work and contacted. Tech YouTubers aren't journalists, Paul. Everyone knows that. Well, they are when they also have a website where they actually do written content as well. Oh, okay. Um, I guess that's the only one. So tariffs is a situation here in the United States where the government's decided to apply tariffs to a bunch of different countries, Boo. ostensibly because they say we have trade deficits with them. I take issue with that, but point being, uh, stuff coming from China, and specifically with this phase three of the tariffs that's going on right, or that's uh, phase three part one started yesterday, October 1st. 10 uh, with a 10 percent tariff increase? on yeah. stuff coming from China, right. a specific list, right. uh, and it's going to increase 15 percent more, taking it up to 25 percent January 1st, 2019. Uh, Gamers Nexus went and talked to quite a few different industry contacts that they have. EVGA CEO Andrew Hahn. Uh, they talked to somebody at NZXT, somebody at Silverstone, somebody at Alpha Cool. They also have some uh, other comments from people who spoke to them off record. Basically, every single one of these companies said they're going to be affected by these tariffs in some way. Right. Some of them said, like, everything we have is going to be affected by this, or most of the stuff. Uh, some, like Alpha Cool, said, we actually have quite a few things that don't fall within the categories right. that are listed. Yeah. Um, but they are they were, like, still... the only one. There's, but they're still affected with some of the products that they sell. Um, the way the tariffs work are when a company in the United States purchases products from China... Uh, the, the company in the United States pays the tariffs and that money goes to the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. We're not 100% sure what that money is specifically being used for. Um, you might assume that Trump money ball. going to the U.S. government might hopefully be used for something positive, but you might also <laughs> think that that's no way in hell that's going to happen. So it's very um, far-fetched at this point. Yeah, the full list of tariffs includes products. Uh, such as power supplies, motherboards, video cards, complete system builds, which I wasn't sure was on the list prior to now, but apparently it is. Bridges, such as SLI and NVLink bridges, I guess. SSDs, mouse pads, mice, keyboards. Keyboards and mice only if bundled together, With other but PC not parts. on keyboards if sold separately. So if you buy an individual keyboard, or if, if you bought a bunch of keyboards... It wouldn't be subject to the tariffs, but you, if you bought a bunch of keyboard mouse combos, like a bunch of companies like Cooler Master sell, then yeah. it would. So weird. CPU coolers, cases, chairs, and more. There's stuff that's not affected by the tariffs. A lot of this uh, is a result of uh, companies or industries that have enough leverage, enough lobbying power to specifically go in and say, hey, we have a bunch of people who are going to be pissed off if they have a bunch of tariffs now on their new iPhones. So iPhones are exempt. Uh, laptops also are exempt. Don't we example. have a voice? Don't we have a say? Uh, we have a say. Uh, you can vote. Well, in, in just over a month, you could vote at the beginning of November. I've been encouraging people to register to vote. Um, but you're saying iPhone that. fanboys don't have to vote? They can just say, like, we're just going to get really angry if you... Everyone should vote. No, I know that. Everyone should vote. Und un undeniable. But... Uh, but Apple Apple people don't have to vote because so wait is that really I, I, can you explain why like iPhones aren't being tariffed but computer cases are because exceptions are made in certain circumstances when enough noise is made that people are like all right we're we won't we'll make an exception for that there's a bunch of exceptions to the tariffs that or you have stuff like subsidies being applied to like uh, to farmers and stuff because there was a bunch of soy, uh, soybean, soybean, because uh, soy was one of the things that was on the tariff, was one of the things that the tariffs were applied to. I see. But the point being here is that PC parts are probably going to be getting more expensive. How much more expensive they get is still slightly up in the in the air, but you can expect ten to twenty five percent more expensive. Um, Did you mention CPUs or GPUs on that list? I didn't catch those. I counted uh, six. Video of... video cards, yes. It does not. It says CPU coolers. It doesn't say CPUs. Okay. So, so I think I, I was actually counting, keeping count of all the main parts of a PC. 
that you were listing, seven of the eight major parts of a PC you just listed. The only one being uh, the only one not being CPUs. So that's it's a good chunk. It's a good chunk of your system. Yeah. Um, so that sucks. There's further fallout from this. There's a, a segment about price increases possibly going to be more than 25% because of other factors taking effect. A knock-on effect, so to speak, where companies lose spending power and will charge consumers to try to make up for it because of the cutbacks they have to make in order to carve out room to pay the tariffs. Um, so that's an issue there. There's also an issue going on with shipping costs right now because tons of companies are trying to preempt the tariffs or at least get ahead of them or at least stock up prior to the holiday seasons that are coming up. So companies that have lots of warehouse space in the United States are actually in a better situation than, than companies that do not because they're able to like be like, ship us everything you have right now while, it's, while the tariffs aren't taking effect or while mm -hmm. it's just 10% prior to it being uh, 25%. Um, get charged on it later and stuff. Yeah, so we'll see what actually happens for the holiday season. Um, and then, I, I don't know. I mean, the upshot of this right now, I think, if people are asking, like, all right, so what's, what's the result? Is, like, if you're thinking about building a computer or buying a computer or upgrading, <laughs> it seems like you should probably do so now. Before those rather, rates take rather, effect. Sooner rather than later. <clears throat> so, yeah. yeah. Black Friday deals might be shit because the tariffs will be in full effect by then. Potentially, or potentially, there enough companies will have stockpiled product because a lot of True. the stuff yeah. for the Black Friday time period, you know, that has already been shipped. That, it doesn't. US. That stuff doesn't always arrive like a week or two before. A lot True. of that stuff has already been Backlogged. being stocked up right now. So it, it's hard to say away, yeah. how much of a significant effect it might have on this holiday season. But uh, hopefully, it's not too bad. And then we'll have to see how things go next year. It's kind of crappy. All we know is the prices are as low as they can be right now. We can't say for the future. Yes. Next story, though. Videocards.com for this one. And uh, Intel's 9th Gen Core processors, the 9000 series, we've talked about a lot of the rumors and potential stuff coming up with that. Uh, for quite a few, for the past couple months, it seems like there's been a ton of leaks. This is an Amazon listing. Now, the price on the Amazon listing is $582.50 for the i9-9900K, which seems pretty high. Uh, a lot of the rumors we were looking at were thinking it was going to be more in the 450 maybe a little bit higher than that range, uh, $450 to $500 range. But that aside, this supposed listing from Amazon, which was grabbed by a Twitter user called Momomo underscore US, has a picture of this 9th gen Core i9 packaging, which seems to be a unique photo that I don't think has been seen elsewhere. And supposedly there's a couple angles at it, but this is just a picture of the web page, so we can't see that. Um, maybe an answer to uh, some of the stuff that AMD has done with their packaging on the high end, especially, um, especially with the Threadripper. Yeah. Um, it seems to be a uh, dodecahedron. Um, whose whose article is this? Does that know. mean it's ten sided? No, decahedron is uh, so deca. Think, deca sounds like ten. Dodeca, I believe, is twelve. Oh, dodeca. Dodeca. Twelve. Twelve sided die. I you could use it for D and D. Dodecahedron, or is that twenty? Oh, do like dose? Oh, no, twelve. I was right. It was twelve. 12. Okay, right. twelve flat faces. So a twelve a twelve sided box. That I, I don't know why 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 that design. Just because it looks fancy. Um, hexahedron. I mean, it Six makes sense if it had faces. twelve cores. Or yeah, 12 that's why. The, even. The, um, it should have been like a an eight sided or a sixteen sided. Whoever guy. whoever from video cards wrote this article said it should be a hexahedron. Oh, there you go. Yeah, which would be. See? Hexahedron would have made, made sense. A solid figure with six plane faces. That would have been that would have been like that attention to detail. That, but this uh, is an eight core processor. Yeah, it's just absolutely asinine. Just anyway, nonsensical. I don't know how much people care about packaging or the unboxing experience or stuff like that. I care a lot. Some of the videos have gotten quite a few views when it comes to unboxing. And I will say, when you buy something like super fancy that you've looked forward to for a long time, if there's kind of a cool unboxing experience for it. That's kind of fun. Yeah. 
Uh, and it's nice, especially when you compare it to some of the stuff that Intel has done with their CPU packaging, which is basically like, we made this cardboard insert for it, which is like the cheapest slashed, most sturdy cardboard configuration to support a processor that you could possibly have. And other than that, it's like a box and there's a paper inside. <laughs> and, you know, that's okay. It, it yeah, transports it works. the processor to you just fine. Sure. Um, you know, I don't mind something like this. We'll see if this is actually true. And if it is, then maybe we will do unboxing videos of it when available. I'm not, I, I have no idea if that's actually going to happen or not. Yeah. Um, moving on, though. Cool. Oh, and here's the, here's the doo doo. You probably saw the packaging. Mo 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 US originally posted the image. Mm. Um, all right, E Times. Speaking of prices going up because of tariffs. E Times. This E Times article says DRAM prices are declining. <gasps> Actually, the DRAM price declines have been accelerating. Finally. We've talked about Samsung and a couple of the other Samsung SK Hynix uh, uh, and, and some of their plans to like restrict their production to limit availability to keep prices high as there is a glut of availability on the market and possibly uh, a fall off in demand. Um, and this is uh, the fall off in demand due to why? People aren't buying many, as many smartphones, I guess. Smartphones mm -hmm. and laptops. Um, but according to the article, DRAM pricing is expected to decline about 5% in Q4 versus Q3 of 2018. Uh, amid increasing bit supply and limited demand growth ahead of the holiday season, according to Trendforce. It's a market research firm that tracks chip pricing. So, we could leave it at that, but no, I want more. I want more. We're going to go over to PC Part Picker. Oh, God. What? Are we looking at prices right now? Of course we oh, are. Oh, the price trends. Uh, well, first, we're going to look at some price trend graphs, which you can look at on PC Part Picker. Just go up to price trends up here in the upper right. Um, so let's check out like a good DDR4 kit. DDR4 3200. That's 4x4. 4x4. Uh, four four. So a 16 gig DDR4 kit, which is going to track roughly about the same as a 2x8 two two gig eight. kit. Maybe a little bit more expensive. So we can see a definite dip right here uh, for September or for the end of uh, September. Yeah. That's that's noticeable right there. Yep. Bear in mind, this is the average price of all the kits. So you're getting not just the kits that are riding the like lowest line of price. You're also getting the, the kits averaged in here that are significantly more expensive. So this average price line is usually a bit higher than what you can actually buy them for. But this is the $200 line kind of right at the center here. And you can mm -hmm. see it was quite a bit above that. It's dipped down to get pretty close to it now. Mm. Um... But, it also seems like it goes up right at the holiday season, too, which makes sense. Right at the holiday season? Oh, like for, for in past years? Yeah. Yeah, that's possible. Which makes, yeah. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is just do a quick search. What do we want here? What do we want? We want, uh, I like the 3200. Oh, I like 3200. Let's look for 2 by 8 That's a that's pretty standard, standard configuration for a, a nice memory setup. Yeah. Uh, and right, is that that's, that's is that all it. we need? That's all for now. This is still that's pretty good. Right. One sixty nine. Oh no, one. No, Kyle, one thirty five. Hey, that's pretty good. That is pretty good for a thirty two hundred speed kit. And it's Rip Charles five, which is pretty. pretty yeah, that's that's a nice, pretty, pretty reliable. All right, well, that's definitely dropped. I feel like it was. Yeah. I feel like it was. I was gonna say well like over 160. I mean, it, yeah. it ramps up fairly quickly here, but if this if these are some recent drops, it might take a while to kind of trickle trickle yeah. up. Yeah, I think trickle up to the to the other kits and stuff. True. All right, so something to keep in mind again, we're we're like when we, when we talk about the price of computer parts, it's very. I'm fickle. always yeah, it's very fickle. I'm always somewhat hesitant because advice we can give, you know, sometimes we might be right, sometimes we might be wrong, but. Sure. People are always asking that question, like, should I buy now, should I wait? Right. And if this dip is something that's, like, dipping down with the memory prices right before everything increases from the tariffs, yeah. then this, this might be just this ideal little time to buy, right. like October 2018. I, yeah. I, I don't know. So, anyway, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it, though. We'll come back to it. Uh, that's all for my news segment. Let's quickly Lovely. talk about our sponsor for today. Okay, let's do it. Where'd that go? Uh, Toshiba. 
Where's the Toshiba. Spot? Sponsor. Uh, we already unboxed their um, yes. their OCZ RC100, yes. which is their cute little M.2 drive. But we have a couple others here. Um, that we could. But we're gonna unbox that again. Oh, okay, sure. Because we're, sa we're saving these for future weeks. Toshiba sure. has sponsored Awesome Hardware for the month of October, so we um, greatly thank them. Thank you. Toshiba makes a ton of stuff, but the stuff that we're specifically talking about is their SSDs. Yes. Which use BICS NAND flash memory. It's um, their own in-house uh, memory, I think. Yeah. Right? So they so they they make this NAND flash, and they can make it to be both fast and affordable, which is why the products based on it are often very reasonably priced and also still have a very quite good performance. Um, the products we're showing off here is the OCZ TR200, which is a nice 2.5 inch SSD available in a variety of capacities. Um, and this is again, often very reasonably priced. So check that out online. We also have the XS700, which is an external SSD. Uh, so it's like a little 2.5 inch form factor, but it's got USB type C as well as USB 3.1 gen two connectivity. And then we also have this little drive that Kyle is wearing on his nose, which is super tiny. It's a, uh, it's a perfect example of just how portable and, and, and compact it is. Yes, this is the uh, RC100 and it's available in a couple different sizes too. Ooh. I said I wasn't going to unbox this. Ooh. I can unbox it. I'm going to unbox it right now. So is that a larger capacity as well because it's longer? Yeah, it's 480. Ooh. It's not longer though. Oh, it's not. Yeah. Wow, impressive. So they're they're both still twenty two forty two. Yeah, still so twenty two forty two. Nice. Um, when you talk when you're talking little M dot two SSDs and the form factor, the size, twenty two is the twenty two millimeters wide. Forty two is forty two millimeters long. Usually, most SSDs we work with are twenty two eighty, eighty millimeters long. This one is just super Yoink. teeny, super teeny tiny like that. Two forty. 480, you said? Yeah, 480 gigs in that little guy right there. Yeah. So compare that to something like... Solid. That's a 2280, which is basically like almost almost twice as long right there. Hell yeah. So cool. I so was, a nice solution for small form factor systems. I just wondered why M.2 drives weren't... Like, more drives weren't this size, because it seems like a lot of the PCB is not utilized on a lot of well, the... Well, this, this, this actually also has a unique kind of cool thing, because you notice there's only one chip on here. Yeah, right. That's like the entire thing is on this chip. It has yep. the controller and the, and, uh, the BICS NAND on the single chip. Yep. Um, so that's, that's why they're able to fit it on. Like, honestly, there's extra space on, on yeah. this PCB right here going out to the end. You so. can put a terabyte on here easily. Yeah. So that's, that's cool. So the RC100 from Toshiba. You can find links in the description uh, later tonight after I add them. I mine's already there. You already did that. I did. All right, go to Kyle's. Slide of hand. Go to the first half, and there's links in the description. Word. I'll add that to mine too. You buy all of them. Okay. Thanks, Toshiba. Thank you, Toshiba, for sponsoring. We awesome love hardware. you. Let's move on to games report. Games report. Talk about some video games. Ooh yeah, we haven't done games report in a while. I know. I was, I was happy to see that you had started this segment today. Well, there was it. some gaming news I felt like people should know. Yar. Um, so let's start out with Red dude. Dead Redemption. Ooh. Did you play Red, Red, Red Dead Redemption 2, I should say? I played the first one, I beat it, and it was okay. glorious. And I really, 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 really hope it comes to PC. So Red Dead Redemption, and we will get to that. Red Dead Redemption by Rockstar Games. Uh, it's a Western... Oh. Uh, open open worlds. GTA uh, Five in the Wild West. GTA Five in the Wild West. Basically, uh, very popular amongst the people who have played it um, for for quite a, a wide variety of reasons. So good. Um, I mean, GTA generally does a, a good job with all their games, and it's coming very soon to PlayStation Four and Xbox One. And eh. according to this article, it's also going to take up a hundred gigs, more than a hundred gigs of space. That really sucks if you have a yeah. console. Yeah, so for consoles, which are definitely more limited on space, that's a definite issue that they might uh, run into. And uh, and also, if you have uh, like a limited limited bandwidth with your internet connection, or if you have bandwidth cap, 105 gigs of hard drive space is the total amount it has to install, at least at launch. Um, so that's cool. It's hmm. actually number two on the list of the 15 biggest PS4 games. And it's not even out yet? It's already on that list? 
Or it would be. Oh, oh yeah, mean, it is. File size wise, 105 gigs. Not biggest, like most influential or like successful, but like just size wise, right? I don't know. Maybe number one on this list. Oh wow. Above Battlefield 4 at 71. I mean, I'm not gigs. surprised. It's it's the it's the latest open world AAA title. So I'm not terribly surprised, honestly. Oh, I thought it was second because it says Red Dead Redemption 2, <laughs> the biggest game. Okay. Second biggest game. I see. Yeah. Sorry, the dogs are barking. You're out in the other room, though. They have to release it for PC. Oh, my now, God. Now, so that's obviously the question, and there's no recent news on that, but I did also link an article from back in July about Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption on the PC, and the answer is that there's not an answer right now. Ah. Uh, true to form, Rockstar is being, being kind of cagey about confirming that it's going to come out on the PC. There's, it's like reasonable to assume that it will come out. Yeah. Um, but they're probably not going to, according to this article, they probably will not even touch upon a PC release date before the game arrives on consoles, which is coming in on October 26th, by the way, tonight. Did I say that? October 26th right. is launch date for the consoles. Um, so there you go. True. This article on PC Gamer goes into a few of their suspicions based on, for instance, a LinkedIn ad that was hiring people specifically to work on the PC huh. version of Red Dead Redemption. Um, LinkedIn ad for from Rockstar. Um, there's also an anonymous Rockstar employee's LinkedIn profile. Uh, I'm sorry, that's, that comes from a profile uh, before it was changed. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's pretty much it. They did list how long it usually takes Rockstar games to come to PC. GTA 4 took seven months. Mm -hmm. L.A. Noir took six months. Mac pa Max Payne 3, only two weeks. Um, but it was historically considered a PC series, so that kind of makes more sense. True. GTA 5, 17 months. Yeah, Jeez. that was a while. Two and a half freaking years. Yeah. Between the... I'm, I'm sorry, one and a half years. Uh, or almost one and a half years. Yeah, that was a long wait. Jeez. But, I mean, it's still going strong, considering that it was announced alongside the 2014 version of the consoles at E3. Um, yeah, so we have to cross our fingers that it's going to come to the PC. Because the first one and, never did. Oh, look, we lost our, our camera again. Oh, geez. Hold on. Frozone. Don't worry, guys. I oh, can boy. fix it. Can I go to the bathroom really quick? Of course, Kyle. Okay. Of course you can. All right. You're back. Kyle's going to take a leak. Sorry. Watch out for the dogs there. I will. Moving on, though. The Oculus Quest is what we're talking about next. Uh, Oculus Quest is the next Oculus VR headset, uh, which is also going to come with not just the VR headset. There's a video here which I'm going to kind of play. I don't know. I don't know how much you guys get out of it because it's 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 like basically the video isn't of the Oculus Quest. It's of a bunch of people getting excited about old computer or old advances in gaming technology so it's a hype it's a hype video it doesn't it doesn't do anything to tell you more about the oculus quest so so let's do that oculus quest is going to cost 400 bucks and it is wireless it's basically standalone um so as you can maybe see from this dude who's wearing it in this environment which has been theoretically what he is seeing here is much more fancy than what we are seeing um, you can wear it wirelessly and you can move around and that, according to the article writer, is a big old advance over stuff like the Oculus Rift. Um, there's a couple specs on it that are listed, which are further down here, uh, newer higher end, oh, higher end O display, it is OLED this time, uh, 1600 by 1440 pixels per eye. Only running at 72 hertz though, whereas the Rift runs at 90 hertz. Um, so we can potentially see something like an upgrade to the Rift in the future that is tethered to a PC. Um, but this will be standalone and it's probably going to be something that's a lot more accessible for people who... Wow, the camera froze again. I don't know what's going on with it. No. Sorry about that guys. Refreshed. All right. I felt so bad having to deny your dog. I know. Tree. I know. He's very sad. I felt very bad. I feel like a shitty person now. Yep. It's so, than usual. Oculus Quest is supposed to arrive in spring of 2019. 
Um, and I imagine for a price of $400 for a standalone headset, it's running Android. Yikes. Um, and according to the writer of the article on PC Gamer, which is uh, Wes Fenlon, he played several games. He couldn't distinguish a difference between the performance of this and the Oculus Rift. Uh, other than, of course, those specific spec differences that I mentioned. It's running a Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 processor. Um, but he tried, like, super hot, and he said super hot was basically the same exact experience that it was um, on the Rift. So, 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 that's kind of cool. And he's also said the experience of playing super hot, where you have to, like, dodge bullets and everything, like, as you move around, um, was a lot better since you weren't tethered to any wires or anything. Oh, we're talking about wireless here? Wireless. Yes, uh, the HMD. Oculus Quest is a standalone VR headset coming in spring 19 for $400. That's wireless? Yes. Got it. Wireless and standalone. Oh, is that, is that what they mean by standalone? Yeah, so it's not, you don't need a PC. It runs oh, by it's just, itself. Oh. It does not need a PC to connect to. Oh. Well, damn, that lowers the barrier to entry a shit ton. It does. What I'd be kind of curious also to see for something like this would be like the ability to connect it to a PC, like like something yeah. something akin to like Nvidia Shield, the way it can do in home streaming from a PC. Right. Um. So you could you play. You, you could use it standalone to yeah. play games, or you know you could Hook if you up. had the uh, you know a, a baller enough Wi-Fi connection or something. Sure. Then you could also connect to a PC to play games that way. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Uh, cool. Let's move on though. Sorry, the dogs are freaking out. My wife just got home. It's a good price, too. Moving on. Harry Potter. Harry are you, Potter. Are you, are you a fan of Harry Potter, Kyle? I like Harry Wizarding Potter. I'm not like Harry a Potter? Harry Potter nerd. I wouldn't consider myself a Harry Potter nerd. I don't know, like, all the lore. But I enjoy the movies, and I enjoy the, the you know, the stuff. Okay. But I'm not, like, a Harry Potter geek. Are you excited about okay? this supposed leaked Harry Potter footage? Like oh, it's already taken down. Wow, Warner Brothers, quick. you can't even see it anymore. Like I don't get, I, I, like I don't, I'm not a geek can't, about Harry Potter. I'm not a Harry Potter geek, so I don't get like giddy about like leaks like this. Yeah, but like whatever new IP or whatever, I'm sorry, whatever content piece that comes out around it, I'll probably check it out. Well, maybe that's a good thing then that we can't replay the video if Warner Brothers is taking down videos because they take down our stream. Because then they might take down issue a takedown notice for my stream. Um, the game might be called Harry Potter Magic Awakened. It's an RPG. Uh, if I kind of wanted to show you some of the footage, it was like it, it's like video of a screen, so it doesn't look that clean, but it also has kind of that s sort of shady look that makes you think like, oh, maybe that's actually legitimate. And yeah. I mean, the the content on screen is pretty cool. So there was a little bit of the character creation feature where you could kind of create your character mm -hmm. as a student at Hogwarts. Sure. Uh, I believe the time that they say it was set is earlier. Um, there's an analysis of the entire video in here. You're a newly arrived fifth year student at Hogwarts that demonstrates a latent gift for magic with unique ability to track and identify remnants of uh, potent ancient power. Upon arrival, strange events begin, begin to materialize in the Forbidden Forest and trouble begins to brew within the castle walls together with Professor Elazar Fig. You embark on a journey through both familiar and never-before-seen locations. I'm fascinated. So it's kind of cool to see. I mean, if you watch the movies, some of the some of the parts from the movies, like of of Hogwarts Castle and stuff. Um, but anyway, for anyone who's really into Harry Potter, I imagine this will be a game that you would be pretty stoked on. Is your wife into Harry Potter? Yes. Some? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for any 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 of my interest in it is is definitely based off of hers. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think she, this is a game she would be checking out? Potentially. Um, yeah, maybe. I don't know. We'll have to see. I mean, I would think any any diehard fan of, of this franchise would be, who's also into gaming, would yeah. be stoked. Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're into Harry imagine. Potter. And also, I mean, it's Harry Potter's one of those sort of, it's got its own universe type yeah. thing, so, you know, they're always expanding on it. There's a, there's a new Fantastic Beasts movie coming out mm. i haven't really watched many of those of the ones either, but based in the u.s heard, but heard that's the theory is that they're going to release the game along with the launch of that movie ah um you know this sort of a cross promotional thing i see which would make some sense is that because they're from the same 
producers or something, or no, it's all in the same the wizarding wizarding world of Harry Potter. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. That's the same universe then. Yeah, okay. Fantastic Beasts is also part of gotcha. the Harry Potter universe, but I believe it's set in America. Okay, that's honestly all I know about it. I have I haven't watched any of those. Harry Potter with less British accents. Yeah, but it's still cool. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, all right, moving on. Sweet Overwatch. I like, Overwatch. I like Overwatch. Uh, they're Which making a Lego good. line of Lego Overwatch heroes. Look, okay. there's there's Tracer as a Lego. Oh, it looks pretty good. <laughs> She's missing uh, the guns. They got Maybe her hair. Guns. Yeah, you're right. She should have guns. That make more sense. Um, we should watch. We should watch this video. Okay. So they're releasing Overwatch themed Lego sets and a Halloween event. What's the Halloween event? We're not. We haven't gotten to that yet. Oh. Oh, oh my animated. god, move. Wow. It's amazing how she far moves, Lego has come. She moves around. Alright. You sure that was in the Harry Potter advertisement? Yep, that was Tracer. Okay. fucking meme love, was that? Love Twitter. <laughs> Lego and Blizzard Entertainment announced earlier this year Heroes of Overwatch would be getting their very own sets. Overwatch Twitter account previously had a very sh uh, short first glimpse in the form of a character selection screen video. Hinted at the possibility of Lego Genji, McCree, Mercy, Soldier 76, Reaper, or maybe Zenyatta or Reinhardt, and Widowmaker at the very least. Uh, no further information on which heroes will be featured or which locations will be getting their own sets. Lego Line will join the Nerf Weapon Line which features D.Va's light gun and Reaper's Hellfire shotgun as part of Overwatch's for for forays into the toy market. I mean, it makes sense. They, they probably do Overwatch Legos. They probably, you know, do the numbers and say, hey, we have a certain age group or demographic that plays this video game that overlaps with the same age group uh, that plays with Legos. So... I thought everyone played with Legos. Aww. That was I, a normal thing. I, I still do. Every, okay. every day. It's also October. Uh, October is the month that Halloween falls in. So here's another Jesus. article from Variety. What's up with the Variety articles Damn. today? I'm not double, sure. Double feature. Um, so yeah. Yes. Overwatch has a seasonal Halloween event. Um, they've only just teased it. They said there's a rumor among explorers about a monolithic lair home to terrifying horrors. Heroes, how will you prepare? And there's a video which is kind of stupid. I mean, it's not stupid. It's a seven-second video, so it's like it's a it's very much a tease. This is an Overwatch. From I want the to Overwatch play Twitter account. I want to play. Stupid. Yeah, this is from the Overwatch Twitter account. So there it is. So maybe there's gonna be a special Halloween map. Like that's literally the entire video. What? Yeah. So maybe you're playing on that castle. Yeah. October 9th, though, is when it starts. It's so my birthday. A week from now. Playing. Oh yeah, your birthday. It right there. And, uh, yeah, so that's kind of cool. Also, along with it, they have more stuff they're trying to sell you. Of course. Uh, Overwatch Halloween costumes. Oh, those are going to go Look at that. millions. Then these are, like, official, officially licensed Overwatch <laughs> Halloween costumes. Wow. Uh, Genji, Soldier, Tracer. Oh, it got adult costumes. Just a slap in the face to all the I cosplayers get out there. I should get a Genji muscle adult costume. Wouldn't it be funny if you bought one of those and you bought that costume and you won a cosplay contest? <laughs> Against people who had, like, custom-made their, their own Genji outfits. I mean, years. if you're a Genji main, then obviously you should should embrace that. I don't know. Anyway. There we go. Overwatch. Halloween stuff. Sweet. And that pretty much wraps it up for my half of the show. Beautiful. Um... Normally, this is where we would do the after party. We are going to do the after party now. Yeah. Uh, so here's the deal, guys. We've sort of slightly been changing up the format of our show, intending to make it shorter a little bit and a little bit more succinct. We didn't quite do that today, but that's fine. Uh, and we've been, doing, we've been doing our after party on Twitch. But we had a few people who were like, I don't use Twitch or whatever, or I like watching everything on YouTube. So we decided to still do the after party on Twitch, but we're also going to do the after party on YouTube as well. Just the after party video on YouTube will probably end up being unlisted in the future. So, uh, in the video description is a link to the after party if you want to watch it on YouTube or if you want to watch it on Twitch, go to twitch.tv slash awesome hardware where we have been streaming this entire episode 164. Yep. Uh, if you don't want to deal with any of the jumping around between stuff, 
and we're going to continue over there momentarily. So we're giving you the best of both worlds, and you have no more reason to complain. Exactly. Ha! Uh, thank you guys for watching this video, though. Hit the thumbs up button, and a big thank you to whoever, uh, whichever lovely person does timestamps for me. I will, uh, I'll pin your, I'll pin your comments and all that good stuff. I'll pin you. Exactly. I'll pin you low key. Right. Also, uh, to anyone who's new here, we will be going over all the donation uh, messages. Yes, that donations. you guys have sent us, and Johnsons will be Johnsons. will be paid out during the after party. So all stay that good tuned. stuff. We'll be right back.